How's it going, you guys? Michael Shanebloom here. I am super excited. I picked up a Phantom 4 Pro, and I wanted to do some comparison tests between the Pro and the regular Phantom. I did a bunch of tests recently. I did some tests of the raw images. I did some dynamic range tests and daylight video tests. And then I also did this test right here, which is an ISO test, basically just testing all the different ISOs and comparing them in video. Pretty much the exact same settings. We're on the same white balance, which is daylight. We're shooting picture style zero, and we're shooting um, the color settings at zero as well. Pretty much just neutral for everything. I'd like to thank my good friend, Matt Triplo, for helping me out with this test. I'm going to leave a link to his work in the description. Definitely check him out. So we started off here at ISO 100. Now obviously it's very dark. I just did this to get all the different ISO values so that you could see all of them. Um, I can't imagine you'd shoot much at ISO 100 at night. Uh, but right off the bat you can notice just how um, contrasty the Phantom 4 Pro footage is in comparison to the Phantom 4. The Phantom 4 is looking a lot duller. Those highlight or the shadows definitely have sort of a gray tint to them and you can definitely notice the sharpness difference between the two. Now again, here's ISO 200, still pretty dark. I probably wouldn't shoot too much at night at ISO 200. Definitely seeing a little bit more detail. Um, here is ISO 400. This is where we're starting to see a lot more detail. I can see a lot of brighter scenes being shot at ISO 400 at night. This is a very dark scene though. We're in La Jolla and there's not a lot of lights. And this is actually done on purpose. I wanted to pick a spot that was very dark so that we could really crank the ISO and test out the differences here. ISO 800 still looking really good on the Phantom 4 Pro, completely usable, um, whereas on the Phantom 4 it's looking a lot noisier. You could definitely um, change that around with some software. You could get rid of some of that noise, but it looks so clean on the Phantom 4 Pro. Um, ISO 1600, this looks great for this scene. I actually think there's definitely enough detail here to make for a good shot. Still very clean. ISO 3200, this is going to be the maximum for the Phantom 4, um, and I probably would never shoot anything with the Phantom 4 at 3200. I just The noise is just going crazy. You could get rid of a little bit of it, but I don't think you can completely remove... Uh, all that noise. Whereas the Phantom 4 Pro, it still looks great, still looks really usable. So here is the Phantom 4 Pro at ISO 6400. Now I left the Phantom 4 at 3200 because it doesn't actually go to 6400. I think that the Phantom 4 Pro footage at 6400 is usable still. You can definitely get rid of some of that noise in post, like I said before. And <laughs> really the comparison here you just notice how much how much cleaner the Phantom 4 Pro footage at 6400 is than even the Phantom 4 at 3200. So here is a 100% zoom on the sport courts in the background. You can really tell the sharpness here. This is what you'd be looking at um, in 4K at 100% zoom. Here's ISO 200. Again just the sharpness uh, is, is so different between the two cameras. And here's where we're starting to see the noise on the Phantom 4. Phantom 4 Pro still looks really good. Uh, you just You can make out so much detail, so much more detail in the Pro. When you look at the, the court and you see the people actually playing sports, they're playing basketball over there, whereas you can't really tell what's going on in the Phantom 4 footage. It's just too muddy. Um, you can actually make out all the detail with the Pro, which is huge. I think I don't know if it's quite up to the level of like a pro DSLR. Definitely doesn't you know hold its ground to something like a Sony A7S, but it's a really good step in the right direction. And I think this footage is completely usable to use with DSLR footage. Whereas the Phantom 4, I'd be very skeptical to use it at night at all and combine that with footage from a DSLR. I just don't think the quality really holds up uh, quite as much. So here's ISO 3200. I think there's a slight exposure difference between the Phantom 4 and the Phantom 4 Pro. 
Um, me and my friend were trying to figure this out. I think it has something to do with the amount of vignetting, how much vignetting the Phantom 4 produces versus the Phantom 4 Pro. I don't think the Phantom 4 Pro has as much vignetting, and I think thus the images come out a little bit brighter. So here's ISO 6400 on the Phantom 4 Pro. I did notice it, it does look a slight bit softer than ISO 3200. We didn't change the focus at all, so it was kind of interesting how um, at 6400 it softened up. Here's another scene that I think really illustrates that contrast difference, the the sharpness. It, you can't you can barely tell the shapes on this garage on the Phantom 4, but on the Phantom 4 Pro you see all the different tonal contrasts in the garage doors and um, yeah, the difference is just <laughs> crazy. Here's another shot um, looking at the edge of the corner. We're just looking at this Christmas tree over here, just the detail. And here's one more shot, just looking at this little apartment complex that's down at the bottom of the frame. Again, just so much more detail in the Phantom 4 Pro shot. Um, you'll notice it is a little bit more zoomed in. We're actually at the same altitude for both of these shots, but it definitely does look a little closer on the Phantom 4 Pro due to that 24 millimeter lens. Anyways, so that is my low light comparison with the Phantom 4 and the Phantom 4 Pro. I think the improvements are huge here. I think between the Phantom 4 and the Phantom 4 Pro, the low light performance is probably, in my opinion, the greatest change um, that's been made between these two devices. Um, I think the stills are still a lot better on the Phantom 4 Pro than the Phantom 4, but um, this low light performance is, is huge for me. Now I feel like I can actually fly at night and produce scenes that that have a certain amount of quality, whereas with the Phantom 4, they just, they always felt muddy, they never felt, they, they were definitely more on the spectrum, closer to like a cell phone camera at night versus a real DSLR at night. And I just feel like the Phantom 4 Pro, as far as the sensor quality at night, is a huge step in the right direction. And um, <laughs> I'm curious to see what they're gonna come out with next quality-wise. I mean, the Inspire 2 is, is gonna be absolutely fantastic quality-wise, but I'm curious to see what they're gonna do with the Phantom series after this. Um, so again, my name is Michael Shamebloom. I really hope you enjoyed this test. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and include some 4K footage, some 4K test footage on my website that you can download or view online. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link to that in, in the description. Um, I'm also going to be hopefully producing some new videos soon, testing the video during the day, also testing the raw stills, and kind of see what the differences are there. But I think this is the one that I was the most excited about, so I really wanted to release this video for you guys just so you could see the differences. Thanks so much, you guys. Thanks for watching.